All right, what is up? Welcome back to March Madness. Today, we begin the Elite Eight. So for this one, I'll explain it after the intro. Go ahead. So for everything that made it to pass the first and second round on the left side of the bracket, all of that is getting talked about today. All of that. That means the left side of the bracket is getting covered today. Then after today, we go straight to the final four. And then the next one, next video will be the opposite side and so on and so forth. So... Let's jump right into this. Also, if you want to check the bracket out, the link down below, you can follow the bracket. I've been going live with the bracket. Every time I post a video, I update the bracket with my votes. So I hope you guys update it with your votes. That way, at the end, we can see whose winners compared to whose. You know what I mean? My winner, your winner. We'll see what it is. That's below. Also, before we move on, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy it. Comment down below. What some of your favorite houses are from this video. And don't forget to subscribe. The first matchup of today's video will be the Horrors of Blumhouse from HHN27. Like I, like you guys heard before, I have some great story about this story. story. I enjoyed this house. This house was phenomenal to me. The fact that we got to go through this house basically alone with no one else there. And it was just me, Nico, Richard, and Jeremy was just terrifying and made me enjoy this house so much and the fact that it had the three properties really made it really strong and the three properties that they were it wasn't just any properties of course you can just say it was just sinister and insidious but that little sprinkle of the purge was a nice little flavor it was kind of like a cool down room like sinister was really cool i'd love to see that at his own house someday Insidious is phenomenal. I've seen it as its own house and it's just great. The Purge, we've seen it as its own house and we know how we feel about that. But, you know, it was a strong house. It was possibly one of my favorite houses from HHN 27. Now let's go on and talk about the opponent today. The opponent is from HHN 28. It is Scary Tales Deadly Ever After. I truly enjoyed this house. Like, it was the first house I did last year. It was the last... No, it wasn't. It's the house I did the most last year, and I have to say, everything about that house was phenomenal. Like, the fact that you're going from, like, from storybook to storybook to storybook, and you can tell just by the scenery of what story you're reading or what story you're in, and it's just really beautiful. I didn't talk about it last time, but they had the, um, Humpty Dumpty Egg guys. They were just, that's all you heard, and I was like, water it was amazing and, and everything about that house was cool to see i enjoyed it i know you guys most likely did as well and to me if i had to choose between scary tales and the horrors of blumhouse the cake has to go to scary tales deadly ever after that house was just we magnifique Next. Two properties are from one from HHN 24. The one from HHN 24 was Dollhouse of the Damned. Like I've said time and time again, this house is beautiful and phenomenal. The amount of detail that went into everything here. The Easter eggs. You had Billy from Dead Silence. You had Chucky from Child's Play. Or you could just say Chucky from Chucky because, you know, no one really remembers what the name of Child's Play is. But it's fine. It's fine. This was such a good house. I remember it so like so amazingly, and it was four years ago, five years ago, basically. It's phenomenal. I enjoyed it. I know a lot of people that have enjoyed it. I want this house to come back some way, shape, or form just for the fact that we can have it back again. Like, it was so amazing. It's amazing. I woke up and I was like, I need this house again. But let's not talk about Dollhouse that much. I, I know it's such a great house, but we can't talk about it that long, you know. We can't. But we won't. Okay. 
the opponent for today's house was from HHN27. This house was fun as shit to go through with The Shining. Let's not forget the twins that were there. Come play with us, Danny. Forever and ever and ever. Danny. No, I'm kidding. The hedge maze scene at the beginning and at the end was really cool. The fact that they had Jack Torrance hiding in the in the grass or in the hedges was pretty cool. I enjoyed that. Um, the whole house itself was really cool. Going through the overlook and being able to see basically The Shining. I loved it. The elevator scene was in there too, if you wanted that. Of course, it was behind a Mac, but it was like beautiful. I loved it. But, but if I had to choose between Dollhouse and The Shining, I'm going with Dollhouse of the Damned because make pretty. Why did I do this to myself? I don't know. It is my favorite house from HHN 25 going up against my favorite house from HHN 28. Let's jump right into this. The one from 25 was Jack presents 25 years of monsters and mayhem, possibly the longest lame name, bleh, longest name on this list. Like I've said, this house had everything everything you started at like this what seemed like a giant carnival you walk in you see like jack's face cindy's face the caretaker's face um eddie's face the usher's face everyone's face is just on the little facade entrance i'm like wow that's really cool you keep walking you go through scary tales <sighs> i loved it you had the bear HHN Bear made his Horror Nights debut here, or Horror Nights Return, but he became popular at 25, so let's call it his debut. Okay, you keep going. You also had the Forsaken when the ship was sideways. You guys remember that? I didn't go, but I remember it because of 25. They had Scream House or Scream House Resurrection, whichever one you want to talk about, which was the Caretaker's House. They had Easter Eggs to all of the icons basically i enjoyed this it was really pretty like i can't get over the fact of how much detail was in this house but the opponent today is from hhn 28 it's poltergeist this was the last house i did and you know the last house you do at an event means a lot to you because if you go into it last like it's the, the closing night the last house you can possibly do you have 10 options and you select this one it means a lot to you so i miss this house and it's barely been basically six months i want poltergeist again i loved it like it was phenomenal it's possibly the best IP house I've ever gone into. And I know it won't be duplicated for a long time. But let's talk about it. You had the beasts. If you want to call them the beasts. You had the face ripping scene where the guy was in the mirror. And he came out. It was amazing. The tombstone scene. It was just great. But I don't want to spend too long because I can talk about this house forever. If I had to compare and choose between 25 years and Poltergeist, it's going to have to go to 25 years. It's just been such a strong house and I enjoyed it so now much. for the last matchup of today's video, it is a house from 24 by the name of Halloween. This guy, before Poltergeist was around, probably still is actually now that I think about it, between this and Poltergeist, they're both probably my favorite IP properties we've ever had. But this one, phenomenal. Halloween is just the most 2T to a movie that transitioned to a haunted house perfectly ever. Like, Halloween, take the cake. You got this, buddy. You look beautiful. To the scenes from the movie where Loomis is shooting at Michael at the end of the house to the beginning of the house when he's trying to stab Lori, to when you see little Michael up the stairs, 
or when you have that scene where it's like a door in a mirror and you see Michael in the mirror, but he comes through the door and it's like, calm down, Michael. But wow, this was just phenomenal in 2T. The opponent, also beautiful, also phenomenal, also unforgettable. Okay, it's from HHN 28. It is an original property. It is Carnival Graveyard. Rust in pieces. This house, oh, Uncle Sal knew what to do with the South Graveyard. Okay, it's phenomenal. I loved it. This was probably the most aesthetically beautiful house. It was so bright, but I've never been in something that was so bright that was so scary, too. Okay, like I wasn't expecting some of the scares. I'm like, wow, these are huge sets. Wow. What? Calm down, buddy. Wow. The Easter eggs in here, too. I talked about them last time, like the one with Jack's face on some stuff there. Their bone. All the different things you could see in this house were just amazing. Like, wow. I can't get over it. I'd love a sequel. I think I've said that about every house that's made it to this round already. But let's just say if I had to choose between Carnival Graveyard Rest in Pieces and Halloween, it's Halloween. You know. And that is all for today's March Madness video. We are really close to the end. This is the Elite Eight, like I said before. And like I said earlier, if you didn't hear me, let's say it one more time. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Comment down below what your favorite houses were from this bracket so far. That little red subscribe button, you can push it, smash it, elbow it, drop kick it, super kick it, switch your music it. It's fine. Whatever you want to do to it, do it. That little bell icon, just flick it. If you want some notifications from whenever we post here at Launch TV. And, you know, the next video is coming real soon. I'm going to say it one more time because I don't know if they heard me last time. Ride or die. And stay excellent, my dudes.